Welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. I'm Aurora Lung from Danville, California. In my last video, I added a few upgrades to this printer, the Ender 3 Pro, including a dual gear metal extruder, a Capricorn PTFE tube, belt tensioners, a spring steel sheet PEI print surface, some better quality springs for the print bed, and some free printable upgrades. After these upgrades were added, the printer works better and is printing better in terms of filament extrusion. All these upgrades are pretty simple and don't require any firmware change. In this video, we will focus on the firmware and add some great features that came with Marlin but weren't enabled by default. The one I like most is the real-time retraction tuning that lets you override the retraction settings you set in your slicer. This feature is very useful if you want to print something like the Eiffel Tower. As you can see, I printed a few of these in my previous videos. I just let the printer print out of the box with a default profile without tuning. The result isn't too bad, but obviously we can do much better. Besides the firmware change, I will also add two sensors, a filament sensor and a bed leveling sensor. Since we're going to customize the firmware, we can config the sensors together. As you can see, I've already installed a dual Z axis. If you're interested in seeing the details, you can check out another video I made previously. I also purchased a direct drive extruder, but I'm not going to use it yet because in the last week's video, I upgraded the stock extruder to a dual gear one. I'm going to keep it here for longer so it can do some more test prints. As you can see, this extruder can handle big prints pretty well. This trash can is quite big compared to the print volume. It took over 10 hours to print, even with a one millimeter nozzle. I printed this using vase mode. In Cura, it's called spiralized outer contour, which turns a solid model into a single wall with a single layered bottom print. It also uses one single extrusion for the surface, so you won't see any Z seams. Okay, let's take a look at the items we will add to the printer today. A $5.50 filament sensor. I consider a filament sensor to be a must, and it's also quite cheap. I bought this two pack for $11, which is $5.50 each. This sensor is basically a limit switch. When there's filament inside, it will press down the button and send a high signal to the motherboard, so the printer knows that there is filament and it will print normally. When the filament is running out, the button will be released. The sensor will send a low signal and the printer will pause and wait for the filament to be changed. A $13 bed leveling sensor. I did some tests to compare the 3D Touch and BL Touch. The 3D Touch isn't as accurate as the BL Touch, but the results are pretty similar. You can't tell the difference in terms of print quality, but if you are interested in these tests, you can check out some of my previous videos. Since the price of this sensor is only $13, I installed one on the Ender 5 Pro and it works great. I will also add this one to the Ender 3 Pro. We also need to print some parts, which are the filament sensor mount, the 3D touch mount. I've put all the links in the description. Okay, these are the items we need. Let's mount the filament sensor first. Use two M3 screws and nuts to secure the sensor to the mount. I remixed this with the filament guide that I added to this printer in the last video. So it now looks like the filament sensor for the cr 10 Pro V2. Next, we will mount the 3D Touch. The 3D printed mount has added an extra 3mm, 
so you don't need to add nuts to extend the sensor. We can remove the Z-limit switch and the cable since we have the bed leveling sensor so we won't use them anymore. We can run the cable of the sensors through the same gap. The 3D touch cable is a little bit short, so we will use this gap to reach the motherboard in a shorter distance. The filament sensor should connect to the empty connector next to the X-limit switch. This time for the 3D touch, we will try a different way to connect it. Before, we always connected the 3 pin to the probe connector and the 2 pin black and white to the Z min end stop. This time, we will connect all 5 pins to the probe connector. Since the DuPont connectors are always a bit loose, you may need to apply some hot glue or you may experience some bad connections. This time, I will cut the wires and clamp them to a JST 5 pin connector. Put the metal connector inside. Cut about 3 millimeters to fix the copper here. And then insert the wires into the connector following the pin on the board. The color from your point of view should be white, black, yellow, red, and green. Now, the cable with the JST connector is more secure than it was with the DuPont connector. Okay, the hardware installation is now done. We will download the latest version of Marlin and do some changes to enable the filament sensor and the 3D touch sensor. We will also enable some extra features that weren't included in the stock firmware. As always, go to marlinfw.org to download the latest version. We also need the config examples. Then unzip the files. We need to copy the Ender 3 Pro config file from the examples. Go to config, examples, creality, and Ender 3 Pro. Our motherboard version is v4.2.2. Let's copy all four files inside. Go back to our Marlin firmware, go to the Marlin subfolder, paste the files here and replace all existing files. We need to install Visual Studio Code and an extension called Platform IO IDE in order to compile the firmware. If you don't have VS Code installed, you can watch the Ender 5 Pro video which covers all the details. Okay, if you have these ready, let's open the Marlin folder. We're going to edit two files, the configuration.h and the configuration underscore adv.h. Let's start with configuration.h. First, we will enable some extra features that didn't come with the stock firmware. Search for Level Bed Corners. Instead of disabling the stepper motors to level the corner of the bed, we can enable this line to add a new feature to the LCD menu. We will use it to move the nozzle to level all four corners. You can also enable Level Center 2, so it will move to the center after the last corner. But since we can't really do anything to the center, the best we can do is make the four corners as level as possible. Next, search for preheat constants. You can change the default preheat PLA temperature to what you prefer. I normally print PLA at 270. I also print PETG more often than ABS. So I will set it to PETG and set the temperature to 240 and 90. Next, we will enable the filament sensor. Search for filament runout sensor. Enable this line. Search for nozzle park feature and enable this line too, since we want the nozzle to move away from the print 
and park at the corner when we change the filament. There's another line in the configuration ADV.h, but we'll do that later. We will now enable the 3D touch. This time, it's a little different. Instead of using the Z, Min, and Stop, we will use the 5-pin probe to connect the sensor. So, search for Z, Min, Probe, use Z, Min, and Stop's pin. We need to disable this line as we are no longer using the Z-min connector to the sensor. We will use probe for Z-homing instead, so we need to enable this line. The rest of the settings are pretty much the same as how we connected the sensor to the Z-min connector. I will go through this really quickly. Search for Define BL Touch and enable this line. Search for Nozzle to Probe Offset. We also need to measure the distance between the sensor and the nozzle. If you use the same 3D printed mount, you can use negative 42, negative 10, and 0. We will leave the Z offset as 0 as we will find the exact value when we turn on the printer. We will also disable software end stop so we can move the XYZ axes as freely as we want. We will need this when we want to find the Z offset number. Search for min software end stops. Disable this line and also disable max software end stops. Now, we need to select which type of auto bed leveling we want. Search for auto bed leveling bilinear and enable this line. If you're interested in knowing what the other types of bed leveling are, I have another video for the Sapphire Plus which explains this part in detail. Search for Restore Leveling After G28. Enable this line, so even if we don't put G29 in our starting G code, the firmware will automatically load the last bed leveling data for the current print. Search for Grid Max Points. The default is 3, as it will be a 3x3, three three, which is a 9-point probe. I want to do 16 points, so I will change it to 4. Search for Z safe homing. Enable this line so we will probe the bed at the center when we do homing. Finally, search for A4988, since the V422 motherboard may use either A4988 stepper drivers or TMC2208 silent stepper drivers. As the stock motherboard of my printer is using A4988 drivers for X, Y, Z, and E, I will just leave these settings. But we need to comment out the warning message or it will not allow us to compile the firmware. These are all the changes we need to make in configuration.h. We can now save the file. Then we can move on to the second file configuration adv.h. Search for the advanced pause feature and enable this line. Since we enabled the filament sensor, we actually want the print to pause so we can change the filament. Search for define baby stepping and this line should be enabled. We also want to enable the baby step millimeter units so we can adjust baby steps in millimeters. Change baby step multiplicator Z to 0.01, .01, so we can change it by 0.01 .01 millimeters when we turn the knob. Enabling double click for Z baby stepping allows us to double click on the knob to access the baby stepping menu. I normally need to triple click in order to access that menu, but it's still a convenient feature, so let's enable it anyway. We also want to enable baby step display total, so it will show the number of the Z offset we adjusted since the last auto home. The adjusted Z offset is just applied to the current print. When you start another print or use G28 to home the printer again, the number will be reset to the default Z offset. Finally, we will enable the firmware-based retraction override features so we can adjust the retraction distance and speed in real time while printing. 
search for define FW retract. Enable this line and you will see a new menu when you print. Now we can save all files and click on the Alien Head Platform I.O. extension. Select the processor of our board. In my case, it's a Creality V422 motherboard, which uses a STM32F103RET6 chip. So we will select this and build. After a while, the terminal will show a success message. Go back to the Marlin folder. Go to the .pio subfolder, build the chip folder, copy the firmware bin file to the SD card, and turn on the printer. If you have any previous firmware files, check the date and time to make sure you copied the latest one. In order to test if everything is working, auto home the printer. It will now use the sensor to move to the center of the bed to find the bottom. Before we can use auto bed leveling, we will level all four corners so we can have a relatively level bed and so the sensor can work better. Go to motion. We've added a level corner feature. When you use this feature, it will move to all four corners. Keep it moving and check all the corners until they're level. Then let's set the Z offset. The sensor can now sense our bed, but we still need to tell the firmware the distance between the pin and the nozzle. We've already set X and Y, so we need to set the Z offset. Go to move axis, move Z, move one millimeter, and move it closer to the bed, but don't touch it. And then we can switch to move 0.1 millimeters. Put a paper between the nozzle and the bed and move the nozzle as close as possible. It should just slightly scratch the paper so the paper is still able to move. The perfect Z offset is negative 3.4. Go to configuration and set this number as the Z offset value. Since we've upgraded the extruder to a metal dual gear one, the E steps of this extruder are 143. Go to advanced settings, steps per millimeter, and set the E steps value to 143. We can now save the value. Next, we will try to do a simple test print to test the filament sensor. Put a short piece of filament inside and start printing. When the print is starting, remove the short piece of filament. If the printer is paused and a change filament message is showing on the screen, then it's working. Let the print continue. When we click the wheel three times, it will enter the baby stepping menu. You can now adjust the nozzle to be closer or further away from the bed if necessary. Sometimes when we're printing thicker layers, we may move the nozzle away, but when we print thinner layers or we want filament to be squeezed on the bed, we can move the nozzle closer to make it stick better. Since we enabled baby step display total, the total number of offset we adjusted is shown at the bottom left corner. We can also adjust the real-time retraction settings to override the numbers we set in the slicer. Go to Configuration, Retract, and turn on Auto Retract. Retract millimeters means the distance, and Retract V means velocity, which is speed. By default, it's set to a 3 millimeter retraction distance and 45 millimeters per second for speed. We can adjust the numbers to be higher or lower to find out the perfect numbers for each model and the filament. This may be a faster way to fine tune the retraction settings instead of using the slicer and adjusting it after each print. I've ordered many upgrade parts for the Ender 3 Pro, but some of them are still on the way. I will post new upgrade videos as soon as they arrive. That's it for this video. If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. My brother and I make a new video every weekend, so check out my channel on Mondays and you'll see something new. See you next week.
I've also purchased a direct drive extruder, but I'm not going to switch it out yet since we just... Okay, the hardware installation is now done.